Okay, so it is seven o'clock on the dot. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, as I've already said, my name is Emily Radke. I am the Ass Assistant Director of Admissions here at Simpson. Um, I am also an alumni. So I graduated from Simpson back in 2008. Um, so residence life is near and dear to my heart as I did live on campus for four years. Um, but that will be the highlight of our conversation today and what we will be talking about. Um, we have Dean of Students and Director of Residence Assistants, uh, Luke Bahanik on with us today. Um, and so he's going to be going through just really um, some basic information about housing, everything from basically where students can live, um, our meal plans, um, as well as some fun activities and things like that that students do do while living at Simpson um, for those four years. Um, but before we get into that, a couple of things that we are going to go ahead and um, do first is we're going to talk about some stuff, just general admissions for those of you that may be on the phone today that maybe um, are interested in joining our community at Simpson in the future, um, maybe seniors that haven't applied and been admitted yet. Um, so I will go over some basic admissions information there. From that point, we'll go ahead and have Luke jump in and start his presentation on residence life. And then we, we will follow it up with about a um, five to 10 minute Q&A session with Luke. And remember, you can ask residents questions or questions about um, the admissions process at that time. So um, just talking a little bit about admissions and just some information about Simpson, as you see that beautiful aerial, aerial photo. Simpson, we are located about 15 minutes south of Des Moines, Iowa. So um, with being in such close proximity to a major metropolitan area, um, we do have a lot of really awesome opportunities for our campus of about 1,200 full-time and un full-time students that does include undergraduate as well as continuing education students. One of the awesome things about Simpson and the fact that we are such a smaller, such a small school is that we have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. You'll find, especially for students that are from bigger metropolitan areas such as Des Moines, Kansas City, Minneapolis, Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, Chicago, you'll see that um, with having um, a smaller uh, student body, we actually have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. This essentially will mean that you're going to have a better opportunity to gain better knowledge and understanding about various different conversations that are in discussions that are happening in class. Plus a better opportunity to really be able to build some really strong partnerships and um, relationships, not only with your fellow classmates, but also with uh, professors um, that you're going to be seeing with seeing and speaking with every day. Um, another great thing too about our campus, and it's not mentioned on this slide, but you know, with having um, smaller smaller campus, smaller class sizes, you know, we do have 19 different athletic um, teams that do compete in the NCAA Division Three. A lot, about 40% of our total student body population, they are student athletes. So we really make it so that. That whether you want to compete at that um, collegiate level or if you're very want to be very well vested in volunteer work um, Greek life or even um, volunteer work you know you have all of those that you have that time and not um, an opportunity to do those great things um, in addition to that we do offer a very competitive and rigorous curriculum surrounding around 80 different majors minors and professional programs Simpson is the kind of school to where if you are dead set on being a pre-med major in biology, we definitely make sure that you are going to have the tools and the time to be able to complete that major in four years. But in addition, we'll make sure too that you have time in your schedule to take classes that are, that are interesting to you, such as religion, philosophy, sociology, criminal justice. All of those things are definitely um, there and available for you. I will also say that of our graduates, especially from our graduating class of 2019, um, six months out um, from their graduation, we did do a survey and we re got results back that showed that 99% of those graduates from Simpson College were either employed um, or they were in a type of graduate program six months after graduation. So we really make sure that we are doing everything that we can so that way you are competitive in that job market. And I can tell you right now, those opportunities for internships um, that are in the Des Moines area and they are close, I will tell you, 
that we really start grooming you for those opportunities as soon as your freshman year. So you will continuously be, um, you know, learning and readjusting how to write your resume, how to um, interact in, a, in an interview with those crazy questions I always want to ask you about work experience. We make sure that you are ready for all of that. So that way, when you go into a job interview, you are putting your best foot forward and showing that employer that you are the best person for, for that job. Last but not least, coming to when it comes to financial aid and costs, we take everything case by case at Simpson. It is a private school, so you are going to see a higher overall comprehensive tuition, but 100% of our full time students do receive financial aid. Um, and again, you know, we take it case by case and we really make sure that college is affordable. Last thing we want is for your first day at Simpson for you to be worrying about how to pay as opposed to worrying about, you know, where your classes are and just really how the next four years or even your first year is going to go for you. Um, so, you know, once you've decided, hey, you know, Simpson is definitely where I want to be, you know, first things first, you'll need to definitely com complete that application. It's a free application online, and we are also a part of the Common App. Um, once you have that completed and you have your high school counselor send us your high school transcript as well as your um, ACT or SAT scores, you're going to want to make sure that your FAFSA is attached to that application as well. So that way our financial aid department can go ahead and get to work on that financial aid offer for you. And I can tell you that they are, we are competitive with, with other colleges, including the big state schools. Um, once you do get that financial aid offer in the mail, you'll definitely want to get in touch with your, with your admissions counselor. So that way we will personally take time with you to go line by line, page by page of that offer and what it means to you and your academic future at Simpson. Um, and then after you get that and you know you say, hey, I wanna be a part of the Simpson community, you will pay that $200 deposit. Um, and what that's gonna do is that, that is gonna essentially gain you access to the online student portal where you'll do a couple of things. You're gonna fill out all of your health forms, you're gonna fill out your housing application, which Luke will talk about here in a few moments. Then you're also going to register for SOAR, which is basically our um, registration days in June. Okay, that's when you'll essentially come, you'll sign up for your SC 101 class, you'll sign up for your first year of class, your first semester of classes, as well as meet your academic advisor. So um, I know that was a lot right there just to kind of tell you a little bit about the admissions process. Um, due to COVID-19, we really wanted to make sure that, you know, even though we are not on campus, you guys can probably tell I am at home, Luke is at home, and so is Mark. Um, we want to make sure that you as the student um, has all the information that you need as you're making your college decisions and where you want to go. Um, our team um, at admissions has done a phenomenal job of getting you getting content like this out to you. So that way you're not having to jump through hoops and ask 15 million people one simple question about housing. So you'll see that we do have um, um, at least two uh, virtual visits scheduled um, a week for the next four weeks in everything from residence life, performing arts, campus life and student activities, academic advising, et cetera. If there is a topic on this list that you don't see that you know we have or a program that you have at Simpson, definitely reach out. Out to to you. Also, um, you know, you'll get granted, we don't have a TikTok yet. I am pretty sure we're going to, you know, we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, as well as YouTube. And if you do shout us out online um, on those social media platforms, just be sure to shout us out using the hashtag, hashtag <laughs> one Simpson. And um, that is all that I have for you guys. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is turn it over to Luke Bahanik. He's gonna run through a presentation for you guys about residence life. And again, if you have any questions about residence life or about, um, about admissions here at Simpson, please be sure to put them in the chat. All right, Luke, you're up. Thank you, Emily, and also Mark for hosting the chat. Um, again, just like to reiterate, any questions are welcome. Uh, so besides housing, I also oversee or work closely with security, student activities, Greek life, as well as dining services. And we'll talk a little bit about Greek and dining here as well. Um, but I work with a number of 24-7 operation um, things within the institution. 
I'm also a instructor within the uh, graphic design program focusing on digital photography. And so I saw an interactive media major on here as well. Um, but certainly love photography and traveling as well. So I'm passionate about May term and those travel experiences. Um, so go ahead, Emily, if you would. So I think I just want to touch on a few points of difference about Simpson. I know a number of you have likely been on campus before COVID um, shut the world down a little bit. Um, but just in case, this is a picture of Barker, one of our two main residence halls that the first year students live within. Uh, every first year student starts in one of these two if they're living on campus. And about 97 to 98% of our first years do start their time uh, at Simpson on campus in one of these two buildings. During their first year, you'll have a chance, and subsequent years as well, um, but most students join Greek life if they do during their first year, and you'll have a chance to join one of those houses if you're interested in that. Um, they do, depending on capacity and your interest, uh, allow you to move in during the your first year, and so that might be a, a different place for your residents um, later on after your first year, or during your first year or beyond. We do have a number of cultural centers. We have George Washington Carver, uh, cultural Center, La Casa Unida. Uh, we have a Women Gender Resource Center as well as Performing Arts House. Um, and those are just different types of housing options for upper division students. And we also have seven different apartment complexes that are owned and operated by Simpson. So you, when you live in these, uh, you don't have to worry about a lease, you don't have to worry about utilities, but they all have full kitchens. They do have uh, living room and bedroom furniture as well. They're furnished in that way. And so it's a nice balance towards independent living. And uh, I guess as you progress during your time at Simpson, that's one of our focuses is to also progress your maturation towards living independently after, after you graduate. Um, and within all these housing uh, options, we have meal plans as well. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. Just a few points amenities wise. Um, Free laundry, so we, our car, or sorry, our machines don't use any quarters or cards. You go and use them just like you would at home. Um, they're uh, high efficiency machines that um, hold up. They're built for commercial grades. So um, we have a nice contract with the vendor that, that takes care of servicing those for us. Uh, we have fully air conditioned and carpeted rooms. And we also have a number of safety systems built into the, to the buildings. Um, we are fully sprinkled, which is a fun way to say that we have sprinklers in every residence hall room and hallway. Um, that's something we uh, take a lot of pride in um, as we've renovated different buildings or taken them within the, um, you know, taken ownership of them if they're nearby campus, such as our apartments. We've modified, modified them to be up to our standards within safety. Um, this is Barker Residence Hall in this picture and that orange door um, or red orange door right there, that is locked 24 hours a day you only have access to it if you're a residential student. And so there's a number of those types of things um, we have built into our buildings as well. We do have some security cameras on exterior doors. Um, and we, I should say, also are keyless. So on residence hall individual room doors, we use combos. Um, we do not have keys, so you're not going to get locked out of your room. But we'll talk at SOAR, especially, um, and when you arrive, how important it is to, to not give away that combo. So go ahead, Emily. So Emily mentioned the housing application on SC Connect, and you have access to that after you deposit. It's already up and running. Um, it was released in February, and so we just take those on a rolling basis. And one thing we've attempted to do with the application is also make it editable. So if you do find uh, that something changes, a roommate preference, and which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, or something along a different line, you're able to go in and modify your application um, at any point up until I think we're planning the cutoff around June 22nd, which is after SOAR, but before we get together and make all the other decisions about housing. Um, one thing that, that's really important to us, and I really can't overstate this, is how important it is to be honest when you fill this out. Um, if you're messy, say you're messy. Um, if you're an early riser or night owl, say that. You, we want to be able to make the best match we can, and that's only going to be as good as the information that you give us on this application or the information that your admissions counselor already knows about you. Um, this is especially true if you shop around for your own roommate, which we'll talk about shortly. Go ahead, Emily. So we offer a number of options for roommates. We'll we will honor any mutual request that is um, verified by every side of it. So whether that's two, three, or four people, if you know people you want to live with, you can put them on your application. And as long as all 
um, all parties involved say the same thing, we'll honor it and we'll match you together. Um, I would say that it just because you're best friends with someone uh, since you're three years old doesn't mean you'll make great roommates. And that's, um, that's a conversation worth considering. And we can still put you on the same floor if that's a, a request. We've had that request before. Um, but I think it's especially important to talk through room dynamics. Um, and again, just because you click on a friend level or interest level, uh, living dynamic might be a little bit different. And so just, just be thoughtful of that. We've had some long-term friendships um, not work out so well in the roommate department. And we obviously want to avoid that type of thing. So just be thoughtful. It's obviously worked well for some as well. Um, if you're interested in, in looking for roommates, um, the face, your class's Facebook page is a good way to do that. We used to offer our own separate Facebook page, um, but we've gone away from doing that because the, um, the class's Facebook page kind of turned into that anyway. And we know that um, Facebook is obviously um, more popular in some communities than other, but we find it's the best vehicle just to have some discussion threads um, for people to direct message on Messenger about um, interests, follow-up questions, and then if you come to an agreement of living together, um, then go ahead and modify your housing application. Um, and then the last way we make roommate pairings or matches is the most common. So over 50% each year will get matched by us sitting in a room with all the admissions counselors and all of the SC Connect housing applications. And we sit for a whole morning and try to make the best matches we can. And that's very sincere. Um, we care about this deeply. Uh, we do not have a computer, have an algorithm do this for us. Um, we really try to use as much information as we can um, to make the best decisions we can regarding your first housing experience. We also know that sometimes it doesn't work, whether it's roommate you've chosen or whether it's a pairing that we've done. And so we have a safety valve, so to speak, built into around fall break and at semester break of your first year where you can change up roommates uh, without any questions asked from our, from our perspective. And so that is something we'll talk more about at SOAR. Um, and obviously, as the semester goes along, that'll be something that the person that works directly with your buildings will be communicating about as well. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so I mentioned meal plans. Um, one of the questions on your housing application will be which meal plan do you prefer? And because you don't likely know what blocks or boards, we call them either, uh, mean we, I wanted to spend just a bit of time introducing you to those terms. So a, a block is basically just a meal at our Pfeiffer cafeteria, which is the all you can eat option. So you go in, you swipe your card, um, you eat as much as you want during that meal period, and that's a board or a block, easy. Uh, to understand. It's also worth $7 worth of food at any Kent venue. So within our campus center, we have four different food venues that you can use this uh, meal plan at as well. And it works at all of them. So it's actually quite flexible. Um, it allows students to have a variety of food options on a campus, especially of our size. It's pretty unique. Um, and within Kent, for example, we have a coffee shop, um, we have a, a sub uh, soup and salad place, and we also have a grill option as well. Um, and we're gonna, we have a fourth venue as well. We're modifying over the summer and we're still making some decisions on that. Um, also regarding flexibility, you can use as many blocks in a meal period as you like. So if you're feeding friends or family that are visiting or you wanna stock up for a long weekend uh, traveling or um, whatever the case may be, you can use as many as you'd like in one meal period. Um, or any day really. And blocks um, are built, these are semester plans, they're not weekly plans. So you, you can really use them efficiently during the course of the semester. We found that when we had weekly based plans, students were miss, missing a lot of meals um, if they didn't use them every week in full. Another nice thing about the flexibility is you can combine blocks and flex in one purchase. So say you have something that's worth $9 in Kent, um, you can use a board and $2 in flex um, so that you can serve the board. So you don't have to use two boards to pay for something that's just over $7. Um, and lastly, I just say that our Greek housing does have the option to provide their own meal plan to their students if they would like. Um, three of the seven currently do. The other four are on our meal plans. And within our apartments, I mentioned them having full kitchens. And we offer the ability for students uh, in the apartments in our theme houses to um, go to a, a partial meal plan, 100 blocks a semester rather than the 150 or 200 block. Um, the one, when we get student questions or parent questions about what's better for you um, as you fill this thing out, I would, the only piece of advice I could give is if you plan on eating at Kent more often um, for smaller things like 
maybe getting coffees or um, buying small, like maybe a pastry at the, you know, the sub place or, um, you know, smaller things to go items at different places. The one with more flex offers you a little bit more uh, flexibility in that regard, but that's really the, the only substantial difference. Um, if you do run out, I'll just answer that on the fly because it's important. Uh, I should mention it anyway. You have the ability to add more to your plan. Uh, we build our plans to meet the needs of most students. We know that some students will run out if they, um, depending on their diet, their plans, however, other if they're feeding a lot of uh, visitors, et cetera. And so we offer affordable options to add more or you could just add, uh, or you could just use cash or credit card like any, um, like a store or any type of restaurant you would have. So that is an option as well. Go ahead, Emily. So a little bit about the timeline. We mentioned um, enrollment deposit and how that, that opens the door to SC Connect and the housing application. When we do make matches, and I think this is important to know as well, uh, not, so we take personality into account when we make the best, uh, the best matches we can. We don't look at when you submitted your housing application. But after we have, say, the stack of male doubles, so to speak, uh, we'll go through and we'll look at when the applications were submitted and just kind of give our own um, preference metric um, based on uh, those. So when we go through and we fill the buildings, um, you know, we might fill first floor, or second floor or first or something like that, um, or different types of rooms we think have unique character. And so the earlier you get that application in, um, the better odds you have in, in that stack, so to speak. But again, we, our strongest preference, our strongest priority is um, a good roommate match. So between now and June, it's optional. You can look around for roommates or, or um, you know, connect in different various ways, however you would like to do that. And then during SOAR, we'll reiterate a number of these points in more detail. We'll talk about move-in day, what to bring, what not to bring, um, and those types of things. In this SOAR, whether it's virtual or in-person, we'll talk about these, this type of information. Uh, we'll also reiterate iterate the last chance to modify your housing application, which would be shortly after that. In early July, um, the, I would say the first half of July, you'll receive your housing and roommate assignment uh, from us, and that'll be delivered to your Simpson email address. This year, we're gonna uh, do a different process with that this year, so that'll be going over email. And um, then Saturday, August 29th, my favorite day of the year, um, move-in day. So our move-in window is usually nine to 1 a.m., or sorry, nine to 1 a.m., nice Luke. Uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's just so impressive how the community comes out. It'll be the easiest move you ever make, I promise you. You won't have to lift a box. In fact, if your parents, you won't even be driving a car in, in theory. We want your guests, if you have them helping you, to be driving your vehicles. They won't even leave the vehicles. You'll get out, you'll go to a tent, um, you'll check in, you'll get your uh, packet of information, you'll go to your room and all of your stuff will be outside your door or in your room uh, by the time your parents get back with the cars. We unload a car every 90 seconds for four hours at two different buildings. Um, it's an impressive day. And I was a math major and was geeky enough to put those numbers together. I promise you that they're accurate. Um, so the entire Greek community helps us move. Uh, admissions counselors are there. My staff obviously are there. The SC leaders who are your SC 101 peer mentors, they'll be there as well. Um, last several years, the volleyball team has helped us too. Um, so it's just a great day. It's, it's just an exciting day and rain or shine will be there. We'll be moving stuff in. Um, so the, um, I would say the last thing I would mention, I mentioned volleyball I actually made me think of this, that if you're a fall athlete that has an earlier date of arrival ahead of the 29th, you'll have a separate move in day that your coach will arrange and you'll have a separate check-in, but you will move into your fall assignment. So you won't have to move into one place for your sport and then move into a different place a couple weeks later or a week later. Um, we, we move you into your permanent location right away. So you won't have to worry about shifting once you get here. Right. And with that, um, my, I guess my main talking points are done, but I'm certainly open to answering anything that you have on your mind. Yep, and Luke, we do have um, some questions for you, but um, we did have a couple of um, 
admissions questions yeah. that were asked first. I just want to make sure that I get those out here. Um, first, um, Duncan asked this question. Um, I see that this is being recorded out of curiosity. Will this and other sessions be posted online somewhere? Yes. So we do have a YouTube um, and all of our um, previous virtual visits, such as this one plus this one, will be recorded and posted on, um, on our channel. So um, we have the sessions for the week posted on Fridays. Um, but right now, all of our previous sessions are already out there. So just be sure to go out there and check us out. Another question was, um, is Simpson test optional? Yes. Um, we are a test optional school. We're one of a handful um, in the country. Um, and you may apply to Simpson as a test optional candidate if you have over a 3.25 GPA. If you want more information about that, just reach out to me and we can talk about that some more. Um, another question, um, do you foresee the scholarship amount can still be honored to freshmen entering for fall 2021, given the current financial situation? So essentially, as most of you guys probably already know, um, just with, you know, the nature of whether it's a public or a private institution, um, the cost does go up every year. And that's really with anything um, the nowadays. And that does inc um, include the cost of tuition. But we will balance that out with our scholarships. So you may, so you will see an increase to scholarships offered as well. Um, I would say that the scholarships that you see online currently are for students that are coming into Simpson for fall 2020. When those fall 2021 um, tuition and scholarship amounts come out, we will be sure to get that information out to you as soon as possible. Um, and then the last question that came, um, or actually, no, well, uh, this is actually one for Luke. So, but I can probably just go ahead and answer it. Is there any changes to the meal plan if you are on the Simpson Promise Plan? No. So um, you will still be able to choose between those options that Luke has already mentioned. So I will go ahead and be quiet now. And Mark, will you field questions to Luke? Yes. So um, the next question that we have, we actually only have one more um, on there. And it's a question about how do you get added to the class page for, um, for the Facebook page? So, yeah, I, um, that's hosted sorry. before, you know, I was just gonna say before people arrive on campus, that's hosted um, and, and housed within the admission staff. And so um, once the, the class page kind of is turned over to us, once things, uh, once students get onto campus, but um, so it, it's, I think, gatekept by admissions right now and um, will continue to be so until later on in the term. All right. Yeah, and um, I believe Margaret, um, as long as you've already um, paid your deposit and everything, we can go ahead and get, get you added to that. We can talk to our sure. admin about that. Good. All right. Does anyone else have any other questions? We've got some time. Uh, so. Yes. Um, I have been asked if mopeds are, are, are mopeds really not allowed? Uh, we don't have any restrictions on mopeds as long as they're street legal, um, but you are not able to ride them through campus. So I'm not sure if this um, is in reference to can you bring them at all uh, or can you bring them on campus? Our campus, is, I mean, there's central campus in that photo right there. So we don't want a lot of motorized vehicles going through there. Um, but as long as you have a parking tag and it's street legal, um, you're able to bring a vehicle like that. All right, are there any other questions? Oh, okay. Did parents attend SOAR as well? This is a question yeah, I, from Eric. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, so there's a whole guest track. And so not only may it be parents, but also other influential people in your life that you feel are good supports for you. Um, and so there will be certainly parent information. I actually have a session with parents to talk to them about how the institution approaches working with parents as um, it's much different than the way high schools interact with parents and sometimes that's a jarring change for families but yeah if your if your family is able to attend or your guardians or the people that are important in your life are able to attend and learn more about Simpson and more about the support systems we have for you and for them uh, yeah by all means please bring them along all right I are there any other questions that anyone has at this point? Oh, okay. 
Uh, this is from Katie. What kind of what kinds of foods options are available in the cafeteria, and do students generally like the food? Sure, I can take that. So I actually chair the dining. Uh, we call it a food committee. A really fancy name for a group of students that meet every other week, giving us direct feedback about the way you know things are going, what they're seeing. Um, the dining manager sits on that group as well as our chef uh, and our retail manager that manages Kent. Um, so I, I personally, I eat at Pfeiffer every day of the week during the week when I have, uh, so I have a meal plan as well. Uh, so I, when you walk in, um, there's just a, a number of different stations. There's always a deli and salad bar, uh, you know, a sandwich line and a salad bar line soups every day. And then there's some sort of exhibition station, they call it or expo where they're making either stir fry or custom built macaroni and cheese with different different toppings or fajitas or um, just really anything like that. And then obviously there's a dessert station. There's always cereal and there's always ice cream. Um, but the, the pizza is great. Honestly, I love the pizza um, and probably too much really, especially when you're in your thirties, this matters in life. Um, and then um, there's, you know, a grill that's always up and running and there's another food line as well. So I can tell you, we take the feedback seriously. Um, you know, the, the, the committee's feedback has become resoundingly more positive over the last two years. Um, we've, our, we have a new manager a year and a half ago and a new chef as of this uh, early this semester, and both have just been fantastic. And so I really enjoy eating there. I'm a vegetarian, and I find it really easy to eat there every day um, with a number of different options and, um, and plenty of different uh, Different variety to certainly keep me uh, happy, and there's no dishes, so that was also good. As an adult, that matters as well. Okay. Um, Duncan would like to know, um, let's see, uh, how popular are the restaurants uh, besides Pfeiffer, and what other, um, what other food options are there available besides Pfeiffer and Kent and any off-campus places that students like to go to? Sure. So, um, if you can hear my 16 month old in the background, I'm sorry. He just went down for bedtime and he's not pleased about that. Uh, so this is life under COVID. Um, the restaurants in Kent actually have more like dollar for dollar traffic than Pfeiffer does. Um, and it's because there's just a number of different options. And one of the reasons we're making a change this, um, this year or over the summer to have a more grab and go options and to have a different type of sandwich place that's easier to, to make uh, food more quickly for students because it is so popular. This has been a pinch point for us ever since this building opened in 2012. And um, it, they're extremely popular, to be honest, um, and high quality food um, and a, a robust menu for a variety of reasons. Um, besides, besides campus, what other options are there? Um, there's a number of different places in um, in Indianola, they're obviously around the square. There's a number of restaurants, um, different places. Uh, the square is uh, probably two blocks off of campus, and it's where the old and new, currently under construction, courthouse was located. Um, there's also, I would say, if you ask, if you pulled like 100 students, like family feud style, um, and asked them what their favorite restaurant would be, I would say around 50% would say La Casa. It's a Mexican restaurant that's on the main street in, um, or the main highway when you come into town. And I would say um, that would take the lion's share of the popular votes. Uh, it's just really good food and it's well-priced. So um, very popular. No love, for, no love for Pizza Ranch, Luke? None? Uh, you know, that's not walkable for <laughs> students. It's not, unfortunately, but I know I eat there at least three times a month. So <laughs> that's just because I work there. <laughs> that is, I would say it's just not as popular with the student demographic. Okay, well, I guess for us in our 30s, then. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. All right. So um, All right, there so are a couple of questions. I I'm sorry, Mark, um, that I see here about the enrollment deposit um, and when it needs to be submitted. So I just want to go ahead and answer those real quick, and then Mar um, Luke will jump back to your questions. Um, so as for that enrollment deposit, um, if you want to mail it in, that's totally fine. Um, but the most po more popular option is to just go ahead and pay it online. If you go to simpson.edu and then you select admissions and aid, there is, um, and you scroll down, um, there is an option to pay your deposit online. Um, and again, once that is done and we have that in the system, that is when everything will go ahead and open up for you. Um, and I would say that um, 
you know, you can submit it whenever you want, but we're really trying to make sure that we have a good grasp on our class of 2024. So you guys coming in in the fall um, by May 1st. So um, if you can just have that deposit to us by May 1st, um, that's going to be the best. So that way, again, you have time to get those forms sent in as well as, um, you know, figure out, you know, who you want your roommate to be and all of that other good stuff. So, so that there is that. Um, there is another question. I'll just go ahead and move into it real quick here. Um, and this one's for you, Luke. Um, when do we need to turn in health forms on SC Connect? And how does the Wi-Fi on residential areas and other parts of campus um, work? Is it stronger in some places more than others? Sure. Uh, health forms really, uh, as long as it's before SOAR in June, um, that's fine. We'll remind you at SOAR if it's not in yet, but that is a, a form that's not as time sensitive for us as housing is. So really any time uh, at SOAR would be fine. Um, and SOAR to Rachel's question as well, uh, if, if the COVID situation continues, uh, I'm guessing SOAR will be continued on the same dates. It'll just be on, on virtual or online to some capacity and we might backload things into August a little bit. Um, but as of now, it's very much planning on going on in one way, shape, or form in June as scheduled. Um, there's some time, relate, uh, especially regarding registration for classes that are really important to take care of then. So, um, and Wi-Fi. So, I would say about three years ago, um, the college made a substantial investment in adding an access point, basically a wireless router, into every residence hall room in the first year area. Um, our residence halls are cinder block in, and drywall, um, and Wi-Fi signals don't go very far in those types of buildings. And so they, they really stepped up their game. We, when we have an average of like, I think it was four or five devices per student that you're bringing to campus, um, we know that bandwidth and connectivity are so important. And so honestly, over the last two years, I've seen like measurably, I've, I've measurably noticed the Wi-Fi strength dipping once, and it was about a, maybe two months ago, and Call of Duty came out with a new uh, like 80 gigabyte upgrade or update, and I don't know, apparently that Call of Duty is quite popular on campus, and so um, that slowed things down actually during the middle of the afternoon, which was uh, unusual. So the college does... Um, throttle different areas of the internet to focus on the academic needs first, um, but those are mainly during class times um, and not so much in the evenings. They'll, they'll not have that concern in the evening. So residential areas actually we've seen Wi-Fi, both Wi-Fi and network satisfaction grow considerably over the last few years. So I would not see that as a concern here. All right, um, our next question is from Ivan again. Um, or I mean from Rachel, I'm sorry, my bad, it rolled, scrolled up on me here. Um, can they have coffee makers in their residence hall rooms? Yes, yep. Uh, the only thing we say regarding appliances to not bring are things that basically, if you set a piece of paper on them, would have lighted on fire. So um, we don't allow toasters, toaster ovens, um, but we do allow coffee makers. We allow George Foreman grills or crock pots or those types of things. If it has a closed circuit, and we'll talk more about this, the nuts and bolts uh, at SOAR, but if you're looking for, you know, graduation idea gifts and things like that, um, just if you, if you can see the element that is heating, then it's probably not good to bring, basically is our rule of thumb. Because um, that means something could fall into it and, you know, obviously not be good for things that are flammable around it. And um, Ivan, there's not an option currently through ITS to upgrade Wi-Fi. And frankly, we haven't, uh, or internet overall, and we haven't had that demand from students or asked that question. In fact, that's the first time I've had that question for a while. So, um, so that's a good sign, to be honest. Um, we haven't had that concern come up. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for your questions. Those are some really awesome ones. We definitely do appreciate um, the engagement so that way we can get this dialogue out to you guys. Um, Luke, thank you again for your time. Um, you know, we definitely know that, um, you know, time is precious right about now, especially, um, you know, as we move into the evening hours and since we're all working from home and doing school from home. Um, for everybody on the call, um, again, you know, thank you so much for joining us and please stay connected with us online. Um, again, you know, we are on 
on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and we are also on LinkedIn. Um, please make sure you go out on YouTube too to see those other sessions that we've already had posted. And if you need anything at all, you can always find us um, admissions counselors on Simpson.edu. Please reach out to us and let us know what you need.